Sarjic and I'm a researcher in Genos. Genos is a company which specializes in the field of glycomics research. In our recently published paper in Aging Journal titled as Mapping of the Gene Network that Regulates Lighting Clock of Aging, we present our work done on exploring the genetic regulation of IgG galactosylation. So what is galactosylation or glycosylation in general? Glycosylation is post-translational modification that is characterized by the attachment of oligosaccharide chains to a protein or a lipid. Now, these oligosaccharide chains we usually call as glycans. Glycans that are linked to protein, and specifically to IgG, actually largely affect the um, function of IgG in the immune response. If the glycan is removed from IgG, actually IgG becomes or completely loses its activity in the immune system. Now, if we talk about presence of galactose units in IgG glycans, dozens of studies have shown that actually uh, absence of galactose is associated with inflammation in humans, this inflammation either stemming from the disease, but also uh, with aging, advanced aging in humans. Now, this is why it's important that we understand in what way this um, process is regulated. And several studies have now shown that IgG glycosylation is uh, largely influenced by genetics. So up to 75% of the variation that we observe in IgG glycans in humans can be explained by a genetic component. So uh, given that we have access to IgG population data, IgG glycan uh, population data, we were able to run genome-wide association studies as means to, of exploring the genetic uh, background of a variation in IgG glycosylation. So in this study, we focused specifically on galactosylation phenotypes, so either absence of galactose, presence of one galactose, and presence of two galactoses, so mono, monogalactosylation and degalactosylation. So in this study, we had around 13,700 uh, samples in, in total after meta-analysis, and we uh, identified uh, 60 novel genomic, uh, 16 genomic regions, out of which three were considered novel. So then we proceeded by prioritizing genes in those 16 genomic regions in order to get the list of genes to be experimentally validated. So we narrowed down this list to seven genes and we assessed their functional uh, role in IgG galactosylation in HEC293 freestyle expression system based on the CRISPR DCAS9 molecular tools. The system also uh, was transfected with plasma that contains IgG uh, light and heavy chain genes in order to also excrete IgG as the system does not inherently excrete IgG. So we selected seven genes and then did either uh, did both upregulation and downregulation of their expression. So the results of the study uh, now show that MAMBA, TNFRSF13B, and EEF1A1 gene expression results, uh, resulted in the changes in of IgG galactosylation levels. Specifically, upregulation of MAMBA gene. Uh, expression resulted in decrease of IgG monogalactosylated species. Now, why is this interesting? It's interesting because this mamba gene encodes a beta manosidase, which is an enzyme that cleaves beta manose units from the non-reducing end of IgG and of N glycans in general, but uh, it was not previously associated with IgG glycans specifically. So it has a known role in glycosylation process, but also what is interesting is that mutations in MAMBA are known to affect kidney function, blood pressure, and also cardiovascular disease uh, risk. On the other side, we have monogalactosylated IgG glycans that are also associated and identified as the best predictors of future cardiovascular events in women. Now, uh, since MAMBA expression uh, was affecting the monogalactosylated IgG glycan levels, uh, we could hypothesize that there is a link between MAMBA, uh, galactose, and cardiovascular uh, events. However, at this point, we, can, uh, we cannot really, we do not know these mechanisms uh, that could explain this link, but also this really uh, warrants our future studies. 
Also, we had the increase of the uh, once we uh, in, uh, EEF1A1 expression levels were increased, we could observe decrease in galactosylated IgG glycans. Now, interestingly, EEF1A1 was associated with uh, pro-inflammatory modulation of IgG, but now we can hypothesize that it could happen by decreasing its galactosylation. The role of other genes, uh, unfortunately, could not be validated in the HAC293 freestyle transit expression system because it has also some of the limitations. We have to remember that this, this system does not inherently secrete immunoglobulins, and epigenetic context of these cells is not equivalent to that of plasma and B cells, where glycosylation process actually occurs. In addition, it could be that the alternative galactosylation might depend on the gene expression in other cell types and also interactions between cells such as B and T cells. So we might not always observe the natural effects of the gene expression manipulation because we don't have the right biological context. However, we do plan to expand our GWAS studies by increasing the sample sizes, but also continuing to work on developing the efficient system for functional validation of our GWAS hits, uh, both for galactosylation, but also other features of IgG glycans. Uh, and at the end, I want to thank my mentors, Gordon Lautz, Lucia Klach, and Fran Vucic for their support, my co-authors, our collaborators, and colleagues, and I hope we will continue to work on this important on exploring this important process together in future. Thank you.